On this episode, we're gonna cover how you can make your own DIY leather camera strap, and if you do it right, how you can do it for like $10 or less. So we're gonna get started right now. Hey, what's up guys? This is Nick from Nick Expose, and like I said in the intro, we're gonna go into making our own leather camera straps out of a material that is so easy to find, it's gonna blow your mind. So way back at the beginning of the channel, I actually covered a two-part series on searching for film cameras at thrift stores, and then part two of that series, I talked about other film-related stuff that you might want to be looking at when you go thrift store shopping, antique hunting, garage sailing, or any of that. And that, that other thing was leather belts. So I actually use recycled leather belts to make all of my camera straps. The nice thing is they're cheap, especially when they're used, and uh, they're super high quality leather. They're made to last, they're made to be durable, and they're made to uh, look great as well. So we're gonna be using some of this materials. I got all sorts of stuff laid out. I'm gonna walk through it right now and show you guys what you're gonna need to do this. And uh, if you do it all right, like I said, you could do it for under $10, and you could be well on your way to a stylish camera strap, a customized camera strap, and like when you do one of these, it's just, it feels so nice because it's something that you created for your own camera. You get to sport it around, people ask questions, and it's all sorts of fun. So let's go into uh, the materials that we're gonna need. So the first item on our list of materials that you're gonna need is quite obvious, it's a leather belt. Uh, the cool thing about this is leather belts are, they come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, colors, and everything. So uh, to make, I mean, you can make a, an army of different leather straps and they're all gonna look completely different, completely unique, and uh, and it's just a lot of fun to uh, to put all this together. So uh, you're gonna be going out looking for, uh, I suggest brown leather. Um, you could work with black leather. I actually made a, a wrist strap here, and uh, this is out of black leather, but it just, uh, black leather gets stained in a uh, way, unless it was stained all the way through, um, black leather, when you actually cut it, is actually the brown, like light tan on the inside, and it kind of looks a little janky when you cut it. I actually colored mine in on the side with a permanent marker, but uh, it doesn't look the greatest, so I actually don't use this guy. Uh, I did make a, a couple brown um, leather wrist straps, and I'll actually, if you guys want to see like how to make these wrist straps, I could do another episode about that. This episode, I'm going to stick to. Um, neck straps but the cool thing is like you can find all sorts of different like just character in these leather belts this one has different beadwork this one has uh, some rivets in here that kind of add to uh, just some of the stuff so uh, obviously this is a, a thinner leather uh, strap uh, that I cut down but you could actually make something that's a little bit thicker maybe even attach something on the side that goes down a little bit thinner and you could have this big old strap around your neck if you want but there's like there's no end to the amount of different leather that you could find that's been stained different ways and and all sorts of stuff so one of the things that you want to be on the lookout for though is not just any like all leather camera straps are not created equal right so you have uh these right here if you look at this uh actually let me find one that has nice cut sides here we go so if you look right here I don't know if you could see this right in the, uh, the edge there, but um, this leather goes all the way through. This is a solid piece of leather. Um, other, other belts are made out of bonded leather, which means that they have two pieces of the leather that are bonded together. Those you don't want to use. And then you have like pleather stuff. Um, this is suede and bonded leather, but um, I just got this to show you to where it's just different pieces of leather on the inside here, and you could use this. Uh, but at the same time, just durability. I try and stick with um, just solid, solid leather belts and uh, you get leather all the way through. One of the things that you could look at is when you find a, a more worn leather belt, is you could actually kind of pinch right at the, uh, the belt holes where the buckle goes through. And you could pinch in there and you could start looking because it helps to, I mean, when these are used, they start to get really worn down and you could see if it's starting to separate. If it was bonded leather, it might start to separate in there, or you could also see if it's actually true um, leather. Sometimes they're pretty good at making replica leather, but uh, it's just not gonna last for the long haul. So uh, you're looking for something that is true leather all the way through. And then another thing to look for is you want something that's gonna go all the way around your neck. So if I put this guy on here, obviously this goes down to about my chest height, and uh, hopefully this isn't bouncing off the uh, mic too much, but this goes down to chest height. 
and you have to take into consideration. So uh, you could even just like take the leather belt, you know, and put it around your neck at the uh, thrift store or wherever you're buying it at. And, uh, and you can kind of just double check to make sure that it goes down. And then remember uh, at the end here, we're gonna have to make this loop. So you actually want about uh, maybe an inch and a half to two inches longer than what you're gonna actually need. You don't want your camera like hanging up here. It's just not gonna be like fun trying to move that around. So the leather belt that I got for today, actually, like, it's funny, trying to make this video, I used to find all sorts of, obviously I have a big collection of uh, leather belts, but um, these are all, if you could see, well, not that one, because it's the bonded leather, but um, these are all a little bit too short to go down and around. I, I could use this one if I wanted to keep the holes in there, and I thought about it, and I might actually use that, but I actually have these more for wrist straps. Like I said, we could do another video of those, but these are all short enough to do wrist straps, but not quite long enough to do at least a length for mine. So actually what I did for this video is I just went out to TJ Maxx. That's a uh, like discount store that we have here in the States. And, uh, and I got a nice brand new leather belt from The Gap. Um, it's just this beautiful brown leather belt that was only $7.99. So $7.99 plus all the other materials, uh, you're still gonna be close to $10 for uh, a brand new leather belt. And some of you guys are gonna be a little weird about using belts that have been around other people's waists or anything like that. And, uh, and I'm gonna kind of talk about how we're gonna clean those if you do get some used ones. But uh, if you're kind of weirded out by that, don't be afraid to, uh, to go over to a, a store and try and find a leather belt at a discounted price. A quick tip on this is a good way to find longer leather belts is go to the big and tall section. And uh, the cool thing is a lot of big and tall sections and a lot of big and tall stores have a big discount area and uh, you can find leather belts that are much longer than a standard leather belt for uh, a discounted price. So you could be frugal and go just the whole like thrift store and just kind of search your way around it until you find your own uh, leather belt or you could go to a, a discount store and still get an amazing price on one. And uh, that's what we're gonna be using today. So the second thing that you're gonna need if, uh, if you do end up getting a leather belt from a thrift store is uh, I use saddle soap or uh, just leather soap. Um, and I just give a, a good wash into the, the belt. It's nothing spectacular. I take an old toothbrush, get some of the saddle soap on there, get it wet and just kind of go through and scrub it down on the back side, on the front side. Then I rinse it, I let it sit and soak in water. Also uh, a quick tip on any belts that, if you see this one kind of has like, sometimes these backs of the belts, they get kind of that big old like loop, right? It kind of dips down from the, the belt loop on the back of the pants. Um, in order to straighten that out, you can just soak your belt, um, go out and uh, I'll show you that I, I just do this out on my back deck. Um, there's a, a wooden banister on the back deck and I just nail the belt in on each side. I pull it taut, nail it on the other side and let the sun just bake it and dry it. And it, uh, it takes that whole loop um, back out and straightens it out. So uh, the nice thing about leather is it's super, super uh, durable and manageable and you can really kind of just work with it in all sorts of different ways. So don't be afraid if the belt's in kind of a, a rough shape after using saddle soap and after uh, stretching it out and getting it re-shaped, uh, you should be uh, good to go. So the next thing that you're gonna need is a four-pronged metal leather punch. So what this does is it actually gives us the holes that we're gonna be threading through to stitch the entire strap together. And, uh, and these are just super handy. You're also gonna need a hammer. So these will go hand in hand where uh, we're gonna go out on the back deck and we're just gonna use it on some soft wood to just punch right through the leather and uh, this will make your life so much easier when trying to do something like this. That way you're not trying to just shove a needle through leather that gets kind of difficult and it's not gonna look so pretty at the end of it. So the next thing that you're gonna need is a needle and some thread and uh, you're gonna look for a big enough needle to uh, kind of work its way through and be nice and durable to work with the leather. Uh, and then the thread that you're gonna look for is, there's two different types that I would suggest. There's um, these types, which is uh, just the same type of thread that they use on like jean pants. Uh, it's a little bit more durable than your standard like small thread for stitching. You could get these in all sorts of different colors. And then also uh, there is wax thread, which I, th I would say probably works a little bit better. Um, just because one, it's a little bit thicker, you're not gonna have to make any, as many rounds, and then two, it's waxed, so that way anytime it moves, uh, it's not building up friction and kind of wearing itself down. Uh, one of the things, this is actually made with the 
uh, gene thread. Uh, one of the things is over time, this will, will probably start to deteriorate and start to, uh, to break down. I've had this strap for a year now and uh, it hasn't had any issues like that, but uh, over time, years and years and years, it will start to wear down and break down. Think about your jeans, think about the way that you wear your jeans, eventually it starts to separate. This stuff is designed to where it can rub against itself and uh, the wax just helps to prevent and, and just prolong the, uh, the life of things. So uh, you can get all sorts of different colors. I got red, blue, tan, and uh, you can do the same with the, the other thread as well. So along with the sewing needles, uh, one of the things that I would suggest that you grab is just a, uh, a set of pliers. Um, as you're pulling through, the leather gets kind of tough to, uh, to put a, a needle through. So I like to pull the needle out and, uh, and just kind of do that. It just saves my fingers. You're also, like I said, you're gonna need a hammer. You're also gonna need a ruler. Um, you could use just a standard ruler like this, but then I would also suggest trying to find one of these tape rulers. Um, these are used for like doing inseams and, and doing measurements around, um, but this is really gonna help you to do that initial measurement around your neck and figure out right where you kind of want it to come like the bottom of your camera will be kind of just above your, your belly button or right around your belly button. So um, you can measure it out and, uh, and see what the proper length is that you're gonna need for that. It also helps to, uh, to be able to go a little bit longer with this and kind of work with the leather because this is kind of moldable as well. So you're also gonna need some of these little uh, eye rings or these little uh, split rings. I believe these are like 15 millimeter split rings. You want something that's gonna hold up to like 25, 30 pounds. Um, not that your camera's gonna be so heavy, um, but the fact that you're pulling on your camera, like you're not, you have to take into a fact that uh, it's not just the weight of the camera that's pulling down, it's you pulling out and pulling up and, and just all these different movements that are gonna go and kind of put some strain on the, on these eye rings. So uh, you want something that's a little bit more durable. Uh, the thinner ones that kind of pull apart if you try and pull, those aren't gonna work. You want something that's gonna ensure that your camera's gonna uh, be safe and sound and last a long time. So a couple other things that you're gonna want is you're gonna want a, uh, I have one of these green um, cut mats. These are, are made so that way you can cut on them. Um, then you're also gonna need a knife or a razor blade of some sort. So I have a, a razor blade knife here and then just a standard knife that uh, is sharp enough to, uh, to cut through leather. And then uh, the last thing is optional. Well, you also need a pen to, to write out your measurements on the, uh, the leather, but the last thing is optional here. Uh, it's just a block of wood. Uh, it doesn't matter what it's uh, originally used for, but you just want a block of wood to where as I'm pushing the needle up and through into the leather, I like to, uh, to put the needle on here. So again, I'm not um, pushing with my fingers or anything like that. It's just gonna hurt your fingers. So uh, those are all the different materials that we're gonna need. Now we're gonna go into the actual measuring out and uh, laying out on the, the leather camera strap. So, so I'm gonna do a, uh, a tape measure real quick and uh, just see what the size of the camera strap is that I'm gonna be looking for. I want it to kind of come down to right about here. So I'm gonna be at 39 inches, but then I also want an extra inch and a half uh, on each side, so 39 to 40 and a half, and then to 42 inches. So I'm looking to do a 42 inch strap, and we're gonna switch over to an overhead view and, uh, and kind of start moving forward that way. I'll see you then. All right guys, so here we are. First thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna remove all the different labels, so this one actually will pull off, and then we can just go in here. Be careful when you're using, obviously, knives or anything like that. We're just gonna go in and loop pulls through and just pulls out. You can set that off to the side and then we can just clean all of this off of the, the belt here. The nice thing is, is even if you have uh, just some of this, this residue here, um, you could still use this. You could use all the way up into here. We're actually gonna, there's a couple different ways that you could do this. So um, you can cut through and go down the center so that way both your edges are nice and cut like that. Um, I'm just gonna cut down the edge here. If you look at my other leather uh, strap, this side was actually finished, uh, the finished side on the belt, and then this side was the cut side. After a while, they start to look the same, and uh, you just get this nice worn look. Again, here's just an overview of, of what our belt's gonna look like or our strap is gonna look like uh, to where you're gonna have your eye hook over here. Um, you're gonna have just the flap folded over it's gonna go all the way over to the other side and the other side's gonna look identical to that. 
and, uh, and then these are gonna go on your camera. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start measuring things out. So right here, you can see that this is a, about a one centimeter camera strap, um, and then your eye hook or your, uh, your split ring is gonna be a little bit more than that. This one comes into around uh, 15 uh, millimeters, and uh, you just want it to where it's obviously gonna fit through uh, your split ring and then fit onto the camera. So I'm going to keep with that same design. We're going to measure this thing out to uh, one centimeter. And uh, let me just get these pieces out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this micron pen here. I'm just going to go a centimeter in and I'm going to make a bunch of a series of marks uh, just down the, the strap. So the cool thing about this is they don't have to be absolutely perfect. Uh, once you once you start cutting, I mean, you could get as, as perfectionist with this as possible, but um, part of the thing I love about mine is there is some inconsistency in the cut. Uh, it's a bit rugged. I just, I love the fact that it's a recycled leather belt, and I kind of like uh, that it showcases that whole just DIY-ness in it by, by having all sorts of loose ends and everything. So I'm going to speed this up, and I'm going to just go through and uh, and make my series of marks along the way. All right, so I don't know if you could see this, but all along the entire strap, uh, there's just a series of, of just belt marks or uh, just marks to where we're gonna cut along. So uh, we can do, and I'm gonna go through and connect each of these dots and draw a line. One of the things I wanna point out at this point is, uh, we know that I'm gonna do a 42 inch uh, strap. You don't really wanna cut that 42 inches out right off the get-go. Um, because you, you may end up kind of messing up somewhere along the line and it's nice to have that that bit of variance to where we can go through and decide where to cut it later on and cut out any uh, extra imperfections that we don't want showing up. So uh, now in this step, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna connect all these lines and give us a nice cut line uh, to where we can go into the next step. Now I've drawn those lines and uh, some of them are a little faint, but I can I can definitely see them to be able to uh, to cut along them. Uh, again, this whole process can be as like precise and as perfect as you want, or uh, just kind of uh, a little bit more rugged and uh, haphazard. I, I wouldn't go too. I did try one strap to where I tried like cutting in on the edges of both sides and kind of making it look like it was super super worn, and that one didn't turn out. I ended up throwing that one away, but. Uh, with this one, we're just going to cut along this line, and I'm just going to do it as uh, slow and precise as possible, but that's going to be our next step, is taking this line and just cutting along it. The nice thing you could see with a larger leather belt like this, I could actually probably, if I, if I do a good job on this line, I could do probably three different straps, or uh, if you do end up messing up, you do have another side. Uh, to start working off of and uh, and salvage the project in the end. So uh, I'm gonna rotate it this way and we're just gonna cut down. Again, be careful when you're using tools like this. Uh, you do not wanna cut yourself. So uh, go as slow and steady as possible. Don't hold it down to where you're cutting. Uh, hold it up top and then cut. And also don't try cutting towards yourself. Um, it's best to cut off to the side. So we're gonna go into this and uh, and I will see you back here in a couple seconds. All right, so one thing you'll notice that happened here is it didn't cut all the way through. Um, this is actually pretty standard, and it's partly because the, the tip of my blade here is actually broken off, um, but I did know that this was one of my sharper tools. So uh, all you simply do is you just go through and you're just gonna uh, kind of score the rest of, of the piece, and uh, it should just cut pretty simple. Uh, it'll just follow that groove, so you're just gonna run your razor blade uh, just through there, so don't worry if that did happen. Uh, and also at this point, if you did end up messing up, be sure to uh, save the piece that you did cut off, and uh, if it's long enough, you might be able to make one of those wrist straps next time we go over uh, the next video. But uh, I'm gonna finish off and just slice all the rest of this through. Um, but so far, I'm, I'm really happy with the cut, and uh, this is probably one of my straighter cuts yet, so. All right, so now you see that our strap is made. It's nice and straight. Uh, it's actually uh, looking really nice. So you can see here, this is what I'm talking about. There is two different sides. Uh, there's a finished side and then a rough and uh, unfinished side, but um, it's up to you whether or not, I mean, you could go through and you could cut it like this and then cut the other side and, and just kind of have 
uh, both like that. I'm probably actually going to, uh, to do that with the rest of this belt, but we're gonna continue on with this piece here. You can also see uh, that these fit nicely in our uh, rings that we have here. And it's a little bit smaller than the, uh, the last strap that I did, but uh, I think it's gonna work out extremely well. At this point, now that we're happy with our cut, we could choose what section we're gonna cut off. Uh, so it kind of got hung up right here, so I'm actually gonna cut right here. I'm gonna measure out 42 inches and, uh, and make the other cut over on this side. So that's our next step. I'm gonna make my marks right now. So now we have our, our two ends. Our two ends are cut off. We have the initial workings of our strap. Uh, you could put this on and double check that it's going to fall at the length that you want it at. Um, but then you're also gonna measure out uh, an inch and a half and uh, we're gonna work on our fold here. So this fold is actually gonna come over like this. And what I like to do is uh, actually rough this side down and kind of shave this side down just a little bit to, uh, to make it a little bit thinner on that. And then you could also shave in a little bit right here uh, to just kind of make that, that bend kind of wear in a little bit quicker. And uh, we're just gonna kind of do the initial workings before we uh, tap our, our punch through and get it ready for our thread. So essentially all you're doing here is, I, I switched over to this knife because I know it works better, um, but you're just gently scraping along. Uh, you don't wanna you don't wanna do too much. You can see even just these gentle little scrapes start to pull off uh, a decent amount of leather here. Um, but you're just, you're just getting this down to where it's gonna make it just a little bit thinner. It's gonna make it to where it sits over on this side a little bit shallower. Uh, we're just kind of trimming the profile down. This is kind of an optional step. If you don't wanna do this, you could actually jump right into the next step, um, which will be here in a second. But uh, I'm gonna quickly do this. I also know that this camera is set up on the table, so it's gonna be pretty shaky. So uh, I'll show you a little bit of, of this, but then we'll just jump cut to the next, uh, the next scene and we'll get into the punching process to get ready for uh, threading it up. All right, so I've shaved our edges down here and uh, we're gonna go out onto the deck as we're gonna take the punch, we're gonna punch in here and uh, I'm gonna show you guys that process. Like I said, you're, you're at about an uh, inch and a half right here, uh, maybe an inch, let's see here, inch to uh, an inch and a half right there. Um, and we're gonna be punching it, uh, I'll show you, right in this area here. Um, so you're gonna be leaving a little bit. So if you want, you could do a a uh, single hole here, um, you could either get a, a single hole uh, punch or you could just use a nail. Um, the reason why I don't suggest using a nail for this is you want a uniform punch line um, just to give you that nice, uh, you know, I don't know, this is, this is, I like this part looking clean, uh, even if the rest is a little bit uh, beat up and grungy. I just like that, uh, just consistency along here. So that's what this gives you. Uh, you can use this uh, if you wanna put two holes you can actually see here, if I, if I wanted to put two holes in, I could use that, um, but a single nail all the way through. We're not actually gonna do that in this one. I'm just gonna do the, uh, the holes right along the edge here. Uh, you want it a little bit in on the, I don't know if you could see this. Uh, so obviously you wanna have like a little bit of a gap in between here. And you could really, you could do this all sorts of different ways. You could do even a, a single um, stripe right in the center and then do uh, even four of these little loops here going around or uh, however you want. So we're just going to go out there. I'm going to do it the way that I always do it and uh, just do two punches on each side and then we'll come back in and we'll start threading this thing out. So I'll see you guys outside and uh, I'm going to show you how I do this just on the back deck. All right guys, so here we are out on the back deck. I elicited my, my wife's help for this one. She's the, uh, the camera lady right now. Um, but like I said, inside we're going to uh, just grab, you wanna fold it over, make sure that your edges are lined up, and then you're gonna go in uh, just, uh, I don't know, two, two millimeters in from, maybe three millimeters in from the, uh, the outside, and we're just gonna punch to where it goes all the way through, and uh, that's why I use the deck, it's nice soft wood. Um, 
kind of go in and uh, wiggle it around, make it nice and loose and ready for uh, the thread to go through. So then, but you'll pull that out and then you can see right here, uh, you have your different holes. So then you wanna make sure that it lines up uh, to where you punched on the first time and then you're gonna go over and punch the second side. Helps to uh, pull the bottom strap part first and then the top out. And then we have our two sets of holes on both sides. And then we're gonna do same thing over on this side and then I will see you back in at the table. All right, so now we're back inside. We, uh, we just punched the holes. We got the holes all punched in here. Uh, and now we're getting ready to, uh, to do our threading. Uh, one of the things I do suggest and I do like to do is I take a, a larger needle than what I would use and I actually go in and kind of work these holes uh, and just make them a little bit looser to where we could actually um, do our, our actual threading a little bit easier. It'll go through. Um, we're gonna use the wax thread. Uh, I'm gonna use the red. Uh, I do like the, uh, the style of the red on the um, tan. And uh, we're just gonna go through. On this one, I did, uh, I did kind of get a little messed up on the back here. So you just wanna make sure that you're, you're being nice and careful with, uh, with the ways that you're punching. And sometimes it does get a little close to the edge. Uh, you should still be good uh, and still have no issue in uh, just kind of wrapping everything up in there. So uh, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start uh, just kind of boring the holes out a little bit further with, uh, with this larger needle. And then we're gonna go in and I'll just show you the, uh, just the simple way that I start threading this together. All right, so now we're going into the, uh, the threading part. I cut off about a, a foot and a half of uh, wax thread here. Uh, like I said, we're gonna be using this to uh, help push our needle up and through the leather. So I'm gonna just kind of rest the needle on here as we kind of force it in. Um, you want something with a big enough eye to where you can get your wax thread through. Uh, and then what I do is I just go through I start in one on the end, weave it through the proper holes, and you'll just get that started and you'll leave a little tail hanging off right there. And then you're just gonna go back and forth in each of the holes kind of uh, weaving through all of them once you get to the end you're going to come back through. I'm no stitcher, I'm no sewer, uh, there might be a better way of doing this but this is the way that I've done it uh, ever since. There's, uh, what do they call them, like latch hook design, like st stitching and all sorts of stuff but we're just going to do a basic stitch to where uh, we're just going to go from one to the next to the next to the next and then all the way back and uh, just do that a few times, tie it off at the end, feed them back through and then cut them on the other side. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Again, I'm going to be using uh, this here so that way I don't kill my, my fingers and then I like using the pliers here to uh, just kind of pull the uh, needle all the way through. So so once you get to this point and you've gone down and back a couple times we're actually gonna start our side loop and actually feed it around the side. So if you look back at this other strap, you see uh, I just finished off uh, both sides with um, just going around the side and back. It's a, a stylish way you can end and uh, and just do your loop like this, but I kind of like that, that look of having it round the corner. So we're gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna go through about three times um, making this side loop, and then we're gonna go right back over to the other side um, and do the exact same thing over on that side. On this last loop, uh, I'm just gonna finish it off. We're gonna loop up or down and through, and then I, I loop this other part through. So we're gonna kind of do a knot as we pull it through. And, uh, and then the wax, the nice thing about the wax thread is it kind of, I mean, it grips itself. Um, so we don't actually have to tie this thing off. I could actually, Pull that out, make sure that this falls over here. Pull it nice and tight and then the, the wax just kind of binds on itself. And now I could actually cut both of these uh, little loose ends off. Uh, if you want to, you can tie them in and uh, if you finish off to the side, you could tie them together and then feed them both through and cut them on that side. Uh, I'm just gonna do it this way right here. Yeah, 
and you see the first section again I, I would have probably gone just looking back and as you guys go through um, I would probably go and do a, uh, a centimeter maybe a centimeter and a quarter um, and just give yourself a little bit more leeway with these uh, this is all right for demonstrational purposes but I'd like to have both of these sides uh, pushed a little bit further in um, but you can kind of see the the strap is starting to come together so uh, I'm going to jump forward, I'm going to finish the rest of the strap, and then I will uh, see you guys on the other side. Alright, so here we are on the other side of stitching. You can see that uh, you can also put the, the eye ring in, um, or the, your uh, split ring in, uh, as you start into it. One thing that I am realizing is, I, I did go kind of uh, thin with this strap. I remeasured this strap and realized that I did a half an inch on this one. Um, so I would have probably done a half inch on this one, and, and when I cut the rest of the belt up, I'll... I'll probably move forward doing half inch, but um, for demonstration purposes, this worked just fine. You can see that uh, each of the sides has uh, the different stitching done. I included the split ring in uh, when I was stitching this one up, um, but if you didn't do that, you could actually just, I use a, a larger um, needle. This needle has a blunt end, so it doesn't, and you could just put that on at this point. So there you have it. Now you have both of your split rings on, you have your, your strap made. Um, now like I said, you could actually take a, a nail or a, a single um, pronged punch and make another punch if you want to do some finishing touches. The cool thing about these is uh, there's so many different ways that you could stitch them together. Uh, if you wanted to just do loops all the way around the side, if you just wanted to do a uh, big box on the inside, like you could get really creative with the stitching and everything in here. Uh, I like kind of sticking to the standard stitching, but um, you could kind of go sky's the limit with this thing. Uh, get different colored uh, leather, get different colored thread, and really kind of build your own custom strap to match your uh, custom cameras. So it's a couple days later. I went back and made another strap. I wanted to show you guys how clean of a strap that I can make when I'm not uh, being distracted by trying to record a video at the same time. So. Uh, this is from the same leather belt. This is from the center of the belt. You can see how, how nice and clean it looks when you do cut both sides and you have uh, both sides a, a rough finish like that. So a couple things that I did with this one. Uh, this was cut at a half inch. Again, I think that that's the way to go. I really like the, uh, the thickness of the half inch strap and then it also gives you a nice bit of, of thickness to be able to punch into. A uh, couple things here is I actually just did a center punch on this one and then kind of wrapped around the sides like that. I think it's a nice clean look, kind of switches things up a little bit. Um, if you do end up going with the, the smaller, thinner strap like that, uh, this is a great alternative to the double punch method. And then another thing that, that I did here is you see these holes right up in here. This is actually originally part of the belt loop. So these are the holes for the belt buckle. And then I just took and folded over in between the two holes and was able to actually stitch around and do, uh, I actually did this initially. So one of the things that I would suggest, I actually punched this side to match with this uh, leather punch tool. I'll put a link to that down below too. Uh, but one of the things I noticed is when I did this first and I actually went out and punched it, and, uh, and then threaded through before actually punching these holes. It actually held everything together and gave me nice um, clean edges and made sure that all of my punches were nice and square. So that's uh, one alternative way that you can go about uh, before making these uh, punches down here, you can make this a center punch or a, a center hole and, uh, and just kind of go about it that way. So. Uh, just wanted to show you guys what uh, a strap could look like when it's not being done while making a video and everything like that. So I'm going to be sending this one out to a buddy, and uh, I think he's really going to be happy with this one. So, All right, guys, so I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, I've put the strap on my Canon F1N and uh, putting it around my neck. It falls right where I want it, and uh, it's nice and ready to go. The nice thing about these straps is uh, even if you start with a, a brand new leather um, belt, as you use it more and more, it's just gonna get nice and supple and, and just like, just super soft. It starts to just become such a, a beautiful, beautiful leather strap um, as the natural oils and uh, even just dirt and everything, just life as it goes through, uh, it just gets more and more character as you go. Um, if you're using an older belt, you could even get some uh, leather polish and um, kind of clean it up, even add some, uh, some life back into the color, but uh, if you're using a belt like this, it should be good to go and, uh, and ready to just 
run. If you do have any sharp edges, you could actually go through and just kind of, uh, like we were filing that, that back end of the, the loop down, you could kind of go through and just soften up some of the edges even with your knife. Um, and then if you want to get super far, you could look up how to like finish the edges of the leather there and uh, you can do leather edging and finishing there as well. But uh, just a couple things is with this wax thread, um, really just a couple times forward and backward uh, and then a couple loops around the side is more than enough. Uh, and then also, like I mentioned, I would go a half inch or larger um, unless you are um, doing a single set of punch. Uh, if you're doing a single punch in the center and maybe just going around the sides and then in the, the, the center there, um, you'd actually probably get away with just a, a centimeter strap. And this is a nice uh, thin strap. It, it's useful for a lot of different things. It's still very durable. But if you want to do the stitching pattern that we went through and did on this one, uh, I would really suggest going with the half inch and, uh, and just kind of working with that. So uh, if you guys have any questions, I'd love to hear those down below. Also, I don't claim to be any kind of master leather worker or stitcher or anything. Um, this is just kind of all stuff that I've kind of run and gun and learned on my own and just kind of taught myself. So if you know of a better way to do any of this or a cheaper way or anything like that, feel free to leave those down in the comments below. And then if you do want me to uh, make a video talking about these wrist straps, I'd love to hear that in the comments down below. If there's a, a big call for it, um, I'll definitely gladly put together one of those uh, videos and kind of break down the whole thing on on these wrist straps, which are nice as well. So, uh, and then once you guys once you guys build these camera straps, uh, I'd love to see images. Shoot them over to me on Instagram or uh, Facebook or any way that you can get them to me. Email them over to me. I'd love to see the unique and interesting straps and the unique and interesting belts that you guys find in order to use. Um, so once again, leave all your comments and likes down below. If you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I got tons of other content. Uh, go back and check out the original videos about thrift store shopping for film cameras. And then I also have zine videos like how to make a zine, uh, a lot of creative process stuff. So I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel and just have you come along for this journey that is Nick Exposed on YouTube. Uh, otherwise, thank you guys. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for checking this out, and thanks for everyone who constantly reminded me that, uh, that I mentioned that I was gonna make this video. Um, I, I just really looked forward to bringing this to you guys, so uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Until then, shoot more film, make camera straps, do thrift store shopping, and all that good stuff, and I'll see you then. Peace.